Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Sounds Like Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Deborah Henney, and I'm excited to have Joe Gallant here today. He is a creative chap living in Kent, UK, with his wife, daughter, and a little dog named Kobe. He's big into playing music and watching sports, but his passion is helping churches, charities, and other businesses to find their voice online through effective branding and beautiful websites. Joe founded Be Gallant to do just this, providing excellent design in a thoughtful way. You can see some of his past work at www.begallant.uk. Alongside running Be Gallant, Joe co-founded the networking group Christian Businesses in Kent and co-hosts Gourds and Pomegranates, a podcast dedicated to helping churches get started with communicating the gospel online. Welcome, Joe. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your vision? Yeah, sure. I think... Um we can have these ideas of needing to have like a big exciting story in our past and actually I think I'm quite boring in a lot of ways um <laughs> I like to think I'm quite sort of normal down to earth I don't have any sort of massive trauma or anything dramatic to get into but yeah my vision as as you sort of said in my intro there is just to help people um connect with with God's word and and to help churches do that in ways that they're already doing but just seeing if we can help them do it a little bit better um and yeah, that's that's something that I try to do through my business as well. I don't only work with um, churches and charities. Um, so whatever I can do to share God's love with my clients, obviously in the most professional way I can as well. Um, but yeah, that's me. So, so what inspired you to start your business and to take it in this direction? Good question. So... When I, I, I studied uh, TV production, video production at university, um, which obviously is a bit different from what I'm doing now. Um, but I really loved um, sort of the creative aspect of it, making videos. And um, so when I graduated, I worked for our church for a couple of years doing like a ministry apprenticeship type type thing. So it's a nice, varied role. I got to do a lot of video stuff in that. Um, and I also got to learn some more graphic design. I was involved with a website project. Um, and I noticed that churches were, they were willing to invest in these sorts of things in communications, but that didn't necessarily mean that they were doing it well. And it didn't really always mean that their investment was going in the right place. So, um, long story short, they were wasting money a lot of the time. So I, I didn't go immediately, right, that's what I want to do. That's my business. But I think that stuck with me, that registered in my mind. And um, so then as my career went on, as I um, got more involved in other aspects of marketing and sort of taught myself the, the um, you know, the real skills behind these things, um, I realized there was that, that sort of gap there in the market that I could bring in. Um, and that's developed as well to really try and help people through the whole project start to finish not just in terms of giving them a website where we've thought through the aims we've thought through what functionality it needs and then got to actually launching a finished website but in the the less technical the sort of personal side of that as well so whether it's you know a new logo or brand design or whether it's a website that can be quite a daunting thing especially for a small business where it's you you're putting yourself out there um and so trying to give people confidence through every step of that, trying to lead them through the project. And that might sound a bit patronizing, you know, trying to do that to whatever level they need it. So a lot of my favorite clients are really not tech savvy at all. But because they know that, because they can kind of own that, we can develop their confidence and we can say, actually, it's not as difficult as, as you think it is. Um, which isn't always the case if a client comes in and thinks that they're really like, tech savvy and actually they're not and then it's a little bit more of a challenge um but yeah just trying to lead people through the personal side of it as well and give them confidence so when you get a client um how do you kind of figure out what would be the best way to brand them and get a logo for them can you talk a little bit through that process in case we have some people listening who are like you yeah know, absolutely I really use. <laughs> yeah to yeah i think it's um it's a conversation, but it has to start with a lot of listening from my side. Um, so listening to where they're at at the moment, um, you know, like you asking, what's the vision? How did I come to start my business? I'll ask the same sorts of questions, not just what is your business going to do, but who are you? What do you want to represent? What messaging do you want to, to put out there? Um, 
And then when it comes time for me to sort of present some ideas back to them and some reflections, that needs to be a, a discussion as well. Um, there's no point me just saying, right, this is what you need. Um, even when there are times when it's actually quite clear to me that this is what the business needs. You know, it has to be, there's some give and take there. We're working together. And I think that's why it's so important on both sides to choose really carefully who you're going into business with, who you're having a project with, um, because there needs to be that respect and that listening to each other. Um, so yeah, all of those things about people's passions, people's vision, um, their personal passions as well as what they want to say in terms of the business and the the sort of brand messaging of the business and then trying to distill that into something visual um which isn't always the easiest job um you know logos are amazing um and you can say a lot with very little but that doesn't mean that you can say everything and so i think a lot of the time it's trying to just distill it down trying to simplify it and say okay this works with websites as well. If someone is looking for five seconds at your logo, five seconds at your homepage, and you can only get them to take away one message from that, what do you want it to be? Um, and often, if you can get that message across to people in something as simple as a logo, or even just a feeling, a flavor of that message, then you've done your job well. Um, I think if you try to get too many different ideas and thoughts into it, it then overcomplicates it and you end up not really communicating anything. Those are great insights. Um, so, you, um, so your clientele does it tend to be mostly in the UK, or do you service anybody from any part of the world? Um, from anywhere, but it tends to be mostly UK. Um, so, most of my business comes from sort of word of mouth. Um, I do quite a lot of networking. Um, you mentioned the networking group we, we set up, which is slight, slightly different focus, but. Um, I think networking is great, but you have to go in with the right expectation. You know, if you go in, everyone, I, someone said yesterday, no one goes into networking with a buying mindset. That's so true. You're going there to sell. Um, but at the same time, if you think that you're just going to sell to the people who you happen to meet that day and it's all going to be that quick, then it's a non-starter. You might as well just not go. It's something that takes time. It's all about relationship building. Um, and so the more networking I've done, the more I've realized that when I get a referral through networking or through people that I've met through networking, it really feels a lot more like a word of mouth, like a trusted friend type of referral because I've built that relationship over a number of months or years anyway. So it's not just a case of turning up and going, I do websites and someone going, oh, great, I need a website. Cool, let's work together. Here's your contract. You know, um, it, It's that over time learning that um, you can trust each other, learning that you'll work well together. Um, and so either when that person does need a project that they'll they'll come to you and you have a discussion um or if they hear of someone else who needs a project they'll they'll pass on to you um and i think that discussion over when someone does need something it, it's something if i've just updated all the about stuff on my website to try and reflect this a bit more just because they need something doesn't mean i'm necessarily the one to provide it even if they've come to me and, and asked me to do it and i think that's part of that integrity which is core to be gallant and my business is knowing when to say no to things even though you know because of the paycheck or because of the you know maybe the reputation it would be really nice to say yes and I would really love to do those projects but if I'm not the best person for that client then I'm actually doing a disservice to them by saying yes and going ahead with it and I love that you know the two keys uh, relationship building and that integrity that you know what as much as I would love to help you maybe there's a better fit for you, but I can do this, this, and this. And I love that. Thank you for bringing that to your business. I think that more businesses need to key into that because that's a big part of um, yeah. customer service, I think. Yeah, and it's a painful thing, or it can be a painful thing because, yeah. you know, whether I say yes or no to them, I've still got my mortgage to pay. You know, I've still got my bills, um, but I'm trying to honor people in the best way, not just ring every last, you know, cent out of them. Right. I had to think about that. I almost said penny. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I love that. You know, operating your business with honor and living a life of integrity and honor. And I do believe that God totally honors that and will reward that because the Bible talks about, you know, when we conduct ourselves with honor, that there's a great reward 
in that. So, you know, blessings to you in that. Now, this show, it sounds like freedom and getting our thoughts to line up with Jesus is so they sound like freedom. Can you share a story from your life where you had to do that, where, you know, maybe you were in a good spot or a bad spot and you had to bring your thoughts in line with the truth of the Bible and the truth of Jesus to find freedom in an area in your life? Yeah, it's it's hard to pin down one example because I think, like I say, I've not got like a dramatic story, but at the same time, I can think of countless times where my thoughts haven't been in alignment. And that might be in my business that, you know, one of the things that I set out to do is to pray for my clients. And so often I don't do it or I don't do it enough. Um, and it's when I, it's only when you get to that point where you have a meeting that you're really worried about and you sit down and pray before it. And it goes amazingly and much better than you could have expected. And you think, why wasn't I doing this all along? Um, so I think in that sense, you know, someone, um, one of your previous guests mentioned about faith being um, a muscle, um, that it's not just like a one-time thing, but it's something that you actively have to use. Um, and so every day trying to bring our thoughts in line and become more Christ-like. Um, you know, there's one, um, one example. So when I mentioned my studies, um, I had a time of depression when I was at, at university. Um, and that's quite common, I think, when it's um, people's first time away from home. It's a very formulative, very sort of challenging time. Um, and I met with, um, I don't know if you guys have like Christian Union, that sort of thing over there, but like a Christian group that met on campus, um, supported each other, but were there to evangelize. And um, someone who's involved with the the running of that, I used to meet with regularly and she struggled with depression in her past herself. And she would always say to me, um, amongst all of other really helpful practical advice, she would just repeat, God is good. And I'd kind of go, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know he is. It was head knowledge and to some extent heart knowledge, but it didn't feel in that moment like God was good because of what I was going through. Um, and obviously that, was a process over a long time of trying to bring my thoughts in line with the truth of his word. You know, there are countless examples in the Psalms of people who are really struggling, like David struggling with, with depression, essentially, um, and preaching to himself and trying to bring his thoughts in line with what he knew and bring that sort of heart and head knowledge together. Um, and it came down to one evening, there was like a um, national retreat for lots of different Christian unions. Um, and I can't remember at all what the message was on. <laughs> um, but I came away after the preaching and I went and found this person. And I was like, I get it. God is good. And she's like, I know. So I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> but suddenly <laughs> something, something there just clicked. Um, and it's the simplest thing. Like God is good. That's pretty fundamental. Like right up there next to God created the universe. <laughs> God is good. And yet we don't realize what that means and the all encompassing power behind that message of God's goodness. And he's good in everything he does. Um, and so no matter what situation we're going through, he is absolutely good. And his plans for us are absolutely good in that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of a, an overarching thing, which I have to remind myself. And, you know, we've, I don't want to say too much, but we've been having difficult situation with church recently and, and looking like we'll be going to a different church, but, through all of that just trying to remember god is good um even when we don't understand why we're going through what what we're going through absolutely yeah because not everything in life that happens that is good as you kind of alluded to you know we live in a fallen world and our mm -hmm. sin issues can kind of bump one another um but always keeping in our minds but god is good and you know maybe the situation isn't good or this happened to me and it's not good but if I can hold on to that praise and have my soul exalt that God is good, it's a game changer. It's yeah. so powerful, like you said. I mean, once your soul gets a hold of that and you taste and see the goodness of God in everything, it's so transformative. It's it's so powerful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um I know I find sometimes writing things down it could be because I'm a writer, but um, <laughs> you know, writing writing down phrases and writing down in some sort of expressive form, um, mm. reminding myself that God is good. Or sometimes I'll kind of write down my current emotions and I'll be brutal, I'll be raw. Yeah, you know, that's so important. Ugly. <laughs> yeah, 
because we're not good at doing that because I think we fear that by being honest about how we're feeling mm -hmm. or, or <laughs> vocalizing how we're feeling because we we know down, deep down inside that we're going to offend God that we that we're going to it's going to be like a mistrust a distrust in him um but actually he knows it anyway <laughs> right. we might as well be honest and then work from that and not just buy into those feelings but actually work through them um I mean again I don't want to say too much about the current situation because I someone said recently um we should preach from our scars not our wounds because the wounds are still open <laughs> and we're going to bleed all over everyone. Um, but the scars show God's goodness. And, and, you know, so I think it's really good to share our past experiences and things that we have worked through and healed through. But, um, you know, I've been going through some counseling, partly with this situation, partly just with how I've been feeling in general that, you know, you mentioned the family and the dog that's, we've got a one, one year old baby and a, a two year old dog. Like that's, a few years of quite a lot of change coming off the back of COVID, which is a time of loads of change. Um, so I've, I've found the counselling really helpful. Um, it's with a Christian counsellor, so I can be very open about my faith, but know that it's being understood. I've had some counselling in the past when I was at uni that, that wasn't with a Christian. And whenever we talked about faith, whether I brought it up or they brought it up, it was an unhelpful conversation it was suggested that it was part of the problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, processing things, whether that's writing things down, you know, for me, I find it hard to vocalize those, those things. I find it hard to even like recognize them, but I found through the counseling, having someone else just probe a little bit um, and be there to listen and notice things in what you're saying that you might not notice yourself. And that's been a really helpful process. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm a full believer in counseling. You know, they have tips and tricks and they have training that, yeah. you know, the lay person doesn't have. And I think sometimes in our culture or society, we tend to underutilize them mm. because they have skills that are not available to the general public because they trained in this. And there are people who research how to help us overcome. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Thank you for being vulnerable in that. Um, no, of course. I mean, again, yeah. it's something you'd, you'd mentioned before with another guest and like uh, society underuses it, but church underuses it as well, because there's this this fear that that doing so and, and relying on tools which aren't entirely church based tools might might again be showing a lack of faith in, in God to heal. But using all those resources and um, yeah, using everything that he's he's put at our disposal as people. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not a lack of faith. It's saying, you know what? This is a step of faith yeah. that I can be healed and I can be free. And if this is the medium, then this is the medium. And that's okay. Absolutely. I think it's a sign of strength. Mm. Um, but yeah, but I, and I like how you said it's not denying that negative feeling, but, and it's not buying into it. But I, if I hear you correct, it's more of like accepting that this is where I'm at right now. And I see mm. that in the Psalms with David acknowledging this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm feeling but I'm going to take this and I'm going to exchange it for something else. I'm yeah. going to exchange it for praise. I'm going to exchange it for God's thoughts. And I know, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I'll write down my emotions, the very, very raw. And I'll say, okay, God, what do you think of this? <laughs> yeah. And I'll wait and I'll hear, and then I'll write down what he says. And it's amazing. The healing and the freedom in that little action alone, the amount of overcoming and victory that he's brought into my life through that. Um, and then I can praise him for it and praise yeah. him again. And coming back to that praise um, is I think key, but thank you for sharing that story with us. Now I'm going to put up your website here. Uh, so people who are tuning in visually can check it out. It's a uh, begallant.uk. Can you tell us what we can expect to find there? Yeah, sure. So, a, a website for a web designer is always an interesting one but I've tried to keep things really simple so that you know if you come expecting a really modern website and find something traditional then you're going to be disappointed and vice versa so my website is very um, simple very minimal and will show you a little bit about me a little bit about the people I work with and a whole bunch of projects I've worked on before um, you know I'm, I'm a believer in showing off all of your work um, and you know being proud of it I think there's there's too many uh, creatives out there 
who are very, very selective about the work that they publish. Um, and you can sort of, the clients can buy into a wrong impression of what they're actually going to get. Um, you go to my site, 99% of the things I've worked on are, are on there. And if they're not on there, there's, there's probably a good reason for it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Go to his website, check out his work, begallant.uk. And um, let's not forget to tune into our hearts and our thoughts to make sure they sound like Jesus's so they sound like freedom. And don't forget to swipe tap or click over to DeborahHenny.com or follow me on social media at Deborah Henny Author. And uh, till next time, be blessed.